All right, we are back on Morning Line playing some musical chairs. Veronica is now sitting in a chair <laughs> over there. And with us is Beverly Watts, Executive Director. Good, good morning. morning to you with the Tennessee Human Rights Commission. And uh, Veronica did a good job just kind of laying it out. But I want you to go into more detail. You've been with, uh, did you say, the uh, commission since 2007? 2007. Okay, so you've been there. And I know this, I, I think people who work in these types of fields, it's not just a job. It's something that's very important to you as well, is it not? Yes, because I spent 12 years in Kentucky doing the same okay, job. Okay, so, well, again, <laughs> the mission of the commission is to safeguard individuals from discrimination through education and enforcement. Now, the education aspect of it, um, I think we've got a handle on. You can come on programs like this, you travel mm -hmm. the state, you educate mm -hmm. on what the laws. As far as enforcement, and she just started touching on this, mm -hmm. um, so there's lawyers on your staff, a complaint, someone can file a complaint with the commission if they feel they've been discriminated in some mm -hmm. aspect of their lives? Yes. Mm -hmm. How so? Give me, and I'll ask, maybe go broad first, and maybe you can give me an example without naming names of okay. something. Well, mm, let me give you an example of a real case. Okay, that's great. <laughs> start with that. Start, we'll with, start that. with a real case that actually went to enforcement okay. about three to five years ago. I can't right. remember the exact dates. It involved the Coffee County Sheriff's Department <coughs> and it was an allegation of race discrimination by one of their one of their deputies. Okay. Uh, we found cause and then we set a hearing and we actually went to hearing on that case and that's why it can be talked about. It was the a hearing goes before who? I mean you it find cause. It goes before an administrative law judge that works for the Secretary of State's okay. office. Okay. Uh, our office, our commissioners have the final decision on cases such as that, however. Meaning uh, on, on a verdict after the fact? Or does, what they, is the they judge's role? Confirm that the, that the administrative, they have to confirm they agree with the administrative law gotcha. judge's decision. Oh, by the way, how often do they disagree? Uh, this was one of the disagreements. Oh, interesting. This was one of the disagreements. The administrative law judge indicated that they felt Coffee County had followed all the rules and therefore the evidence we submitted was not sufficient to support our original allegations and cause finding of discrimination based on race. Can you give me some of the details on what the finding was, what you came up with, what, what kind of stuff was going well, on here? there was bullying, hazing, racial comments, those kind of things. This was within a deputy toward another employee in the sheriff's department? No, this department? was the sheriff's department itself. I know, meaning it was within that. It wasn't, he wasn't, this wasn't a deputy with a traffic stop. With no, someone. no, no, no. This no, was this, within this, this the was, sheriff's department? This was the sheriff's department okay, in okay. Coffee so County. So bullying and, 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 and racist and language? Racist language, and this was among employees that okay. they knew about and didn't stop. Was it and, a white deputy? That, that I'm not sure if that, I can okay. give you all those facts. Okay. But then the other part of it was if the deputy was late, he was docked for those minutes. If others who were a different race were late, they weren't. So there were things going on with a whole lot of different treatment and it was an interesting case to look at. Mm -hmm. There were not a lot of African Americans or other minorities in the Sheriff's Department, so that was one of the well, issues. How on earth does the administrative law judge not well, see Well, the it? administrative law judge looked at what we presented and how we presented it and they thought, and they heard Coffee County's case. Okay. They believed Coffee County that says they were, these were violation of rules, that everyone was treated the same, and other things. However, mm. in the context of the transcript that came out, it had to then go before commissioners and be reviewed by our Board of Commissioners. The Board of Commissioners read the transcript, read the evidence that was submitted by us and by Coffee County and disagree. And overrule and they, the judge. And overrule the administrative law judge, and that is kind of the power of our Board of Commissioners. That's power, yes. To overrule when they agree, when they disagree with the administrative law judge. So they ruled in favor of the original uh, findings of facts, conclusions of law that we presented in our original recommendation of $25,000 to the complaining party. Okay. Mr. Hosey. Uh, Mr. Hosey had left Coffee County at this point. He's on the East Coast. But Coffee County didn't stop there, so they ruled against Coffee County. Coffee County appealed. went into chance to record and appealed and lost there. And I think we finally got payment from Mr. Hosey recently. Twenty-five thousand dollars. Twenty-five thousand. And what happened to the individual that was accused of doing these? Well, things? this was Coffee County, the sheriff's department globally. Mm -hmm. There was not one individual. Oh, I'm sorry. So you're saying it was throughout. Well, then the buck stops with the sheriff. Right. Right. So the, it was it was the sheriff's department, and so the, so they point, had to. Mm -hmm. Do they have to address this change the way they do things? Well, Is we that made part some recommendations, and uh, 
I'm not sure what the final order said there, but we generally do ask them to do some things there. So they paid money. They have lawyers' fees, which is also payments mm -hmm. that they paid out, uh, and those kind of things. So that's one thing. Now, we have another uh, case recently that we had where our commissioners agreed with the administrative law judge and voted against the evidence that our attorneys had put forth, and it was a housing case. And I cannot even remember the name of mm -hmm. that case, and this was recent. And they, the housing, the AM, ALJ said the housing provider, in fact, was not discriminating, that the complaining parties had violated rules, and the actions taken by the uh, mm -hmm. provider was, in fact, within the bounds of their responsibilities as you know as a provider of rental and they had not violated the law and our commissioners actually upheld that decision okay so so it i mean yeah. so we do have a commission that really does <coughs> take into account their responsibilities and look at things and these were two different boards with composition differently and then just recently they confirmed a decision of administrative law judge where the law judge gave twenty five thousand dollars to a woman uh, who had been sexually harassed and that we think may be going to appeal we're not not really sure, but that was a confirmation of administrative law judge where the law judge really mm -hmm. found in our favor. But it starts when someone actually files a complaint. The, is, the, is the form to fill out a complaint on the website? or Form how is on the website. If they can't find it or they don't want to deal with the website, and we have pretty mm -hmm. much a 50-50 mix, they can call our 800 number. Okay, and we'll mm -hmm. have some of that information right. up at mm -hmm. the end of the program. But, and again, you used the example of a, a public entity, which was the Sheriff's mm -hmm. Department, but it could be whether it could be a private business where right. you feel as though mm -hmm. you're discriminated yeah. or a public entity, right? Right, because the, the last two were private businesses, okay. one a housing provider and one, I believe, a dental clinic in East Tennessee. All right, those who are covered, um, we're talking about discrimination based on race, color, creed, national origin, religion, sex, disability, familiar housing status, uh, I guess that's whether you're the size of your family, exactly. whether you're a single parent, sometimes mm -hmm. they can be discriminated against. Age, of course, mm -hmm. it doesn't list on there the same sex issues, of course, which are in the news and mm -hmm. being debated as we yeah. speak. That's not a protected class yet in Tennessee? No, that is not a protected class in Tennessee. I imagine you hear from people who don't know that at first. Maybe mm -hmm. Have you been contacted right. with folks on we that? We do, and we know individuals involved in different organizations, and from time to time they will come to us and ask us what to do, and we will let them know they can eat they can they can we can do an intake for them we just can't do anything with the case if it has 15 or more employees we transfer it to the EEOC okay okay if it's less than 15 employees the options are probably into the court under some various civil rights laws uh, but it can't come through an administrative agency such as ours and the likelihood of how far it will go will depend on the courts that they file in. Okay, and as far as whether anything changes for you, it all depends on whether legally in the state it becomes a protected class, exactly. in which case it would mm -hmm. be added to that list that exactly. I, just, mm -hmm. I just put there. Typically, how long do these investigations take when you get a, a complaint? They're running right around, uh, on average, about 250 days. Not okay. quite a year, Takes but on average, which means we have some that are longer and some that are shorter. But about 250 days for us to come to a conclusion. The conclusion depends on, well, the conclusion is based on A, the complaining party's statements to us, mm -hmm. the information we get from the responding party, whether they're employers or housing providers. Are provider. they required to cooperate and say, they say, we're not talking to you? I mean, whatever, they made a complaint. I, we're not we're not dealing with you at all and just close the door what, what power do you have subpoena powers or we have subpoena powers but if they fail to cooperate we then look at the issues we have from the complaining party we'll interview their witnesses and we'll see if we can make a case that way just with and that mm -hmm. I would think if you want to defend yourself then you know you should share your side of the story exactly. right? and that's what we encourage them to do but we do have subpoena power do they oftentimes, have you had to use that often? We've not had to use it, I think we've only used it once since I've been here in Tennessee. Mm -hmm. In Kentucky we used it quite a bit. Wow, okay. <laughs> now you've been with them since 2007. Um, how have things changed, would you say, over the last 12 years in terms of the number of complaints you get, the types of complaints, mm -hmm. has it changed much? Uh, we are pretty consistent in the number of complaints we get. Like, do annually. you mean a ballpark? Like, was it like a, it's statewide? So it's we a, generally get about 200 to three, 200 to 300 cases a year okay. that come through the door that are filed. Okay. Two to 300 is what I is is 200 being the lower number, 300 being the higher number. All right, uh, and that's kind of an average. Uh, and then we always have cases in our inventory. 
Mm -hmm. at the beginning of every fiscal year. So we normally have on our on our docket in any given year about 400 to 500 cases that we are working. Working means we're interviewing individuals, we're interviewing the witnesses that the complainant provides for us if there are any. We're analyzing data from the respondents. We're interviewing their witnesses. Uh, we from time to time may interview outside witnesses if they've consulted with others outside that could be witnesses that could provide accurate testimony. Well, accurate information, because that's not testimony at that point. You know what's always intrigued me about this, and I know there is the discrimination that happens. The trick of this investigation, I know it has to be very thorough. There can be individuals who perhaps lose a job, and it's truly because of maybe their skin color or mm -hmm. because of their sex. And then there may be individuals that happen to be in a, a minority group of some type, or maybe because of their age, that lose their job because they're just not good at what they do. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they'll say, well, you're firing me because I'm over 50. And no, no, we're firing you because you're lousy at what you do. Well, I'm going to file a complaint against you. That's what you have to sort through, right? Right, because I mean, when we talk to the employers, if this is an employment case, we will ask about... <coughs> Were there any personnel problems, other issues? We asked the complaining party, too, mm -hmm. at the beginning, and they, they sometimes will tell us, yes, but. Uh -huh. Yes, but they treated me differently from others who were similarly situated to me. The other people over 50 got to do this, 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 and this. Mm -hmm. Or the or the male employees, if this is, is this a cl uh, issue about sex, got to do other things that I didn't get to group. Or they failed to promote me because of my sex, my age, my mm -hmm. race, whatever. So we'll look at who was promoted. We'll look at the race. That's where the analysis comes in. Of everybody promoted or everybody fired or everybody who didn't get a training situation and we'll analyze that based on the race, yes. the gender, or, or, or whatever the allegation is based on of the complaining party to see if there's any basis. So we do interviews, we look at data that they provide us. So if they're, if they're bad employees, that will come out because we will look at the personnel record mm -hmm. and determine that they were written up Mm -hmm. 10 or 15 times for lateness, warned four or five times for lateness, mm -hmm. any things like that. And that everyone who was in that category also was fired. Yeah, that's why these days employees that are savvy, or rather mm -hmm. not employees, employers, would you agree, mm -hmm. that are savvy, that know that every once in a while if they're big enough, they're going to get a couple employees that aren't all that great. Mm -hmm. you got to have a paper trail and you've got to make a case. Because right. you then, you know, so you can say, if, if anyone wants mm -hmm. to make a claim about it, you're firing me for some reason other than my job performance. No, no. Here's your file. Mm -hmm. You build yeah. a file on someone. Right. Uh, you can't just fire them willy-nilly right off right. the bat anymore. Yeah. And then when we look at that file, we'll also look at other files to see if people have the same issues because every once in a while it's a nuance sure. so that's what makes it so difficult so a they had a bad personnel yeah. file they got they were late they were this they were that who else had a, who else was late and what happened to them and that's when we get the sort of like sometimes a rabbit hole we're going down or a winding trail because sometimes we have to come back mm -hmm. and look again at some of the other issues that we've looked at earlier and that's sometimes what adds time to issues but if individuals well if corporations and employers and supervisors are doing what is necessary and they have good policies and things mm -hmm. it does not take that long for us to get through that and find out what's going on we'll take a break on that note mm -hmm. when we come back uh, we'll take some phone calls if you'd like to jump in just questions along these lines um, have you been discriminated against do you have a case that you know you know you had questions about 737-7587 mm -hmm. is the number we'll take a break we'll be back with your calls and more of our conversation right after this 